day. We've been talking about playing at another level. We've been talking about being dominant. And you know even why we've been dominant in the last few weeks? What's the word? Hey. What's the word? Because hey. you got to hit somebody in this game. That's why we've been dominant. Now, when we go out there today, there's going to be a bigger audience that's ever seen football in this entire country and history. It's the biggest crowd ever. Now we got a chance to do what we talked about. We talked about playing this game at a level that nobody, nobody, nobody in any league, anywhere has ever played this game. What's the word? What's the word? What's the word? Michael Pitbull Clemens. Oh, so good to see you guys here, my friend. Oh, that dude's crazy. That dude's crazy. <laughs> that dude is yeah. not the dude people think you are sometimes, but we, that's the football I, dude. That, that, that is the dude, though. I, I, I'm passionate. Love it. And, and hey, guys, how you doing? That was so kind. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's amazing? Um, I love watching that NHL show 24-7, but I can't watch, every coach, and I'm okay with it, but yes. every coach in that yells at their players too, but they're so crude. I was really fascinated by in that clip with you and watching that speech, you're not. You are hard. And my favorite line, you focus on the word family a lot, I love, mm -hmm. but I love how you said, in this game, you gotta hit somebody. Yes. <laughs> but you kept it clean. <laughs> well, well yeah, and, and we tr always try to treat our players with that level of respect, and, and we want to present ourselves in such a way that if they copy us, yeah. right, people will be say, well done, yeah, good job. And so, so I, I didn't use profanity as a coach, and uh, you know, a, as we went around eight years, uh, I, I swore twice. Really? And, uh, and I knew exactly what I was doing each time, and, and my kids are gonna get on me now, because they, I don't think, ever heard me swear. Really? So we just, it's just not something. I, I, I think that when you swear, it illustrates a poor vocabulary. Well, unless you're doing it for a bit. Yeah, well, yes, yes, yes. So that's right. That's, that's right. That's my so, excuse. Yes. yes <laughs> no, no, no. Now, now, when I say that, when, when, yeah. when, you know, the ranting and just the 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 whole, this series of swear words. I yeah. mean, people use it for emphasis, and those the two times I use it, that's what I used it for. I used it for emphasis. It's uh, it's interesting to see uh, when I was watching that tape back, and I remember being once in Ottawa when you guys won, and I saw I saw the Argos win. I remember that moment, and I was thinking how. How that was almost not, in that I remember the time when you were not going to be an Argo, like the, near the end of your playing career. Yes. And I was, I was just fascinated by how different your life would have been if you had left the city. You know, I had never had any intentions of leaving the city itself. I love this city. I say I'm American by birth, but Canadian yeah. by choice. Yeah. I, I love it here. There's no question about that. Uh, so I never had any intentions to leave the city. But, but yes, you know, when you get to the end of your career, a lot of things are going on. And, but the biggest thing is I never intended on being a coach. People ask me, say, what do you do after you play? I says, or, or will you coach? I said, well, I never say never. I'm the op ultimate optimist, yeah. but I'll never coach. No. <laughs> and, and, and I had seen it work out too many bad, uh, too bad for too many guys, right? Yeah. You, you know, you become great coaches, but you don't know your family. And for me, family's number one. And ultimately, that's why I stopped. I stopped when, in 2007, we finished in first place that year, but my oldest daughter was going to high school, and I believe that parenting is the most noble profession on the face of the earth. So it was a saying, every successful man is not a successful father, right. but every successful father is a successful man, and that resonated with me. Tell me about your the women in your life. Tell me about the, do you have one grandmother, great-grandmother who was blind, or a great-great-grandmother? You, you, you are too good. Yes, yeah. my, my, my great 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 grandmother right. outlived both my grandmother and great grandmother, uh, That's and tough. Y it is. And uh, unfortunately, my mom's mom died when she was five of complications from tuberculosis, mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, I'm sorry of pneumonia. Then two years later, her grandmother died of complications from tuberculosis, and so my great grandmother, my great great grandmother, was thrust into uh, this role, and she went blind around the time uh, that I was born. And so at 18 years old, not only did my mom had to care for me as a single parent, she also had to take care of the person who had raised her, but she didn't make excuses, and she wouldn't want anybody that's watching to feel sorry for me as mm -hmm. she say this. She understood your circumstances are responsible for who you are, but you're responsible for who you become. And as a part of that, um, she she wouldn't, you know, if, if if you were feeling sorry for me, she 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 would be a little bit upset about that. But you, okay, here's the thing: Did you get lucky? I mean, obviously you were lucky with the mom you had, um, but did you get lucky in finding this place that you're at? Because a lot of people, understandably, mm -hmm. struggle in that scenario. It's tough to, you know, to, to grow up positive in that and to find your way through it. 
Did you have a moment of clarity? Did you struggle as a young man? Did you battle as a young man? I, no, I, I, I really didn't. And again, it had more to do with my mom than it is uh, me. I think she has more to do with me sitting here with you today uh, than me myself. But, but I used to tell our guys, we all must suffer one or two pains in life, either the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And so as we go there, we need to understand that our, not our situation, but the set of decisions that we make will determine our course in history. Now, it doesn't mean that it'll be as easy as everybody else's, but some of those things are the things that make you better, that make you stronger. Like, I may have been a good football player in another family, but m have never made it because I was told, I, I had things, and I was told that, oh, you don't have to play football because, you, you know, you can do good in school and that kind of thing. So. Well, you were almost done football, right? And then you were a youth director at a church, is that what you were? You, you, man, you, you do your homework. Come on now, come on. Now, now listen, yeah. I, I, I want to say, right, you yeah. know, if, if we can right now, I, I, I love romance. I love, <laughs> listen, I love your mind. Thank you, my friend. I do, man. I, you. I, I, I am in love you with say your you don't mind. Like my body? Is that yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, like, not, not, to, not to overdo the moment, yes. but I, to, be, to be honest with you, I, I, I didn't grow up watching the CFL, but I do remember working at Much Music, and on the occasion of your last football game, I hadn't been to a CFL game since I was about 11 years old, and I was in my late 20s at this point, uh, at my friend Alex, who works in this show. We were at Much Music, we said, Pinball's retiring today. We walked down the street, the sky down, we went to the speculators, yeah. we bought tickets to just go watch your last game, and there was a lot of, because you meant something to the city. Um, and you're, in fact, the true successful immigrant story, in a way, right? You came to this country, um, and, and you've made something that, in a way that you've shown us what Toronto can actually be, what Canada can actually be. And that must be a real shock to you that this is what happened, because when you first came here, like, what was that? Because you were out of football in your mind. Yes. And here you are. What yeah. was that like? Yeah. So you know, when I came here, I had played a year in the NFL, and and so I got the call, and uh, I was I I was I interned at a company called Honeywell uh, during my uh, university years. So uh, after my freshman, sophomore, and junior years, and they were waiting for me. And then after I made the team in the NFL, nobody, I, you know, I didn't expect that. I didn't go to the school I went to, William and Mary, more of an academic yeah. school. I have bet on uh, them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So oh, have yeah, you? I have gambled on them. I, I lost. Yes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <right>. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Lou Holtz said, he, he'd have gave you a little clue. Yeah. Now, Lou Holtz, the famous coach, said, when Arr. I was there, they, they had too many Marys and not enough Williams. Oh, yeah, so amazing. sorry, ladies, sorry, ladies. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, so he would have gave you a little clue on your betting. Fair but, but, uh, but as part of that, when I went to school, I went to school for an education. There was no idea of playing pro football, anything after that. I was going to enjoy football in university, but then going on to have a job. And so after I got a chance to play a year in the NFL, I said, well, this is good. I'm going to go in, I'm going to take this job and so um, the, the uh, at the time the president of the Argos was Ralph Sazio and he said um, would you like to come play football for us and uh, I was on the phone with him it was about 11 o'clock in the morning and uh, he, I, I said I'm not sure sir you know I've been offered a job you know I went you know it's time I think for me to move on he says I don't think you understand can you make a three o'clock flight and uh, so I said let me call my mom so I still call mom on all of my decisions <laughs> mom said it's okay so I, I came up and I I expected to be here for a couple of years, and, you know, the rest and is history. Mm -hmm. All right, stick around. Answer apology with uh, Michael Clemens. We're also going to find out what other Canadian city he thinks should get a CFL team. A lot to talk about with Pinball right after this. We'll be kicking off to the Toronto Argonauts, and we'll get our first look at the newest addition to the Argo roster, number 31, the man they call Pinball, Mike Clemens. They say he's 5'6", and standing beside him down on the sidelines, I would think he'd have to be on tippy toes to hit 5'6". <laughs> <laughs> That's your first play. Yes. <laughs> First play, and, and the, the interesting thing is, is uh, um, Winston Churchill sort of had, he had wonderful, great quotes, right? But he always kept balance. He said, says, um, success is not final and failure is not fatal. So, all, you know, even when you're having success, hey, listen, you need to get better. But when you fail, it's, it's okay, too. He's saying this because he fumbled the I first time. fumbled, fumbled. <laughs> the very first time I touched the ball, I returned the ball. Had a nice little return, but fumbled. All the guys were great. They came and picked me up and told me it was going to be okay. And I 
That's fantastic. It's 20 years later, it was okay. March 1st, uh, tell me what the, the thousand paper cranes are saying. That's amazing. Oh, well, thank you. We, we're so excited about it. We uh, uh, Each year, our, our large fundraiser as our foundation, and may, maybe I should preface by saying what we do as our foundation, uh, education and character are two big things. And so we believe that education and character are the cornerstone of a happy, civil, healthy society. And uh, uh, Dr. King suggested that the concepts of love, of love and power have been contrast as, as polar opposites in our society. To have love, we must resign ourselves of power and vice versa. He said, but love without power is sentimental and anemic. He said, power without love is reckless and abusive. Mm -hmm. He said, power at its best is love. The two are synonymous. And, and so we kind of equate, equate power to education because education determines the quality of your life, health, wealth, freedom, and family. And then we equate that, that love, right, to character. And so that's, that's what our, our foundation is built on. And, and so we uh, are building schools in developing countries. We have a computer program giving uh, computers in homes uh, that don't have computers. Uh, amongst other things, and on March 1st is our annual gala. That's our big fundraiser. That's amazing. Yeah, and you so. also raise Feed the Children, a great organization, right? It's, it's amazing right. that you're working That's that. That's right. Um, yes. So we know the CFL, where is that in terms of which cities have which teams? Where, what other city would you like to see have a team in the Canadian Football League? Oh, my goodness. Ottawa, immediately, yeah. because there's so much history in Ottawa. They keep getting one and getting rid of it. Well, well you know, they, they, they really have a quality group that's in place and this this group is is local uh, you know they've had a few challenges recently but uh, this is a great local group the last group that was in did a pretty good job but ran out of steam a little bit but this is a great local group that has the ability to do what they need to do and then the East Coast and now I, that's that a little nice. bit of challenge whether it's Halifax or New Brunswick you know where, where, we, where we go Halifax or Moncton you know I, I think it's the, East, the, the Easterners should decide that. We shouldn't decide that for them. Right. Uh, so I believe they should decide that. But I think if you have that, then you got 10-team league. You got five real Eastern teams and five real Western that teams. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> it is perfect. What's your favorite football movie? Uh, oh, my favorite football movie is... The Waterboy Counts. Yeah, yeah um, <laughs> I uh, I, Actually, Brian's Song. Oh. Yeah, Brian's song is my old. You, you know, there, there's a lot of good ones, but yeah. Brian's song, it, it was, you know, the Brian Piccolo, and, and, and it was, so it was, the I guess, the age when I saw it. You know, I'm a little guy, and I'm so immersed into it, and this was a real story yeah. about real life and, and football being not the main story, but part of a story in real life, and so that, that, that's my all-time favorite. So good. Check it out. So, so Diane and Michael Clemens, right? March 1st in Toronto. It's the Thousand Paper Cranes Gala. It's important. The Michael Pimmel Clemens Foundation. So great to see you, Michael. Thank great you so much. Great to see you as well. So fast. So fast.